Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the security keynote for this 2021 Elasticon Global Gathering. My name is Nate Fick, and I'm the general manager of Elastic Security, meaning I have the privilege of leading our security solution team. I hope you're all healthy and well wherever you are in the world. I want to take a step back and spend a few minutes on our philosophical approach for those of you who may not yet know Elastic as a security company. We can boil our fundamental problem statement about security down to this. Modern security is a data problem. Enterprise environments are getting more complex and variegated, more devices, more distributed, faster. And so the volumes of data that security teams must monitor are surging. And so to answer that problem, Elastic's core identity is also very simple. Elastic is a search company. We bring the power of search with speed, scale, and relevance across all of your data to enable insights that you can act upon fast. Our goal is to take this search experience and give it to everybody to use to solve all kinds of problems all around the world. I find that a good rule in life is to try to separate the headlines from the trend lines. Headlines are this big attack or that major breach. The trend lines are the broader story. And we see two of them putting more pressure on security teams. The first is that there is just way more data than most security teams can collect. And that data comes from more and more apps. These apps represent more attack surface and they add IT complexity. And that complexity translates into more ways for adversaries to get in and more places for them to hide. And at the same time, the adversaries are more motivated than ever to evade our security tools and detection methods. They're professionals with a high degree of funding and sophistication, big potential payouts, and they're leveraging cutting edge techniques to get in, to hide, and ultimately to accomplish their missions. And security teams struggle to keep up. Despite all the investments that organizations have made in security technologies and staffing, it's the same story over and over again. We've moved to the cloud, so we're much more agile, but now we have new blind spots. We're generating more data as a business, which is a great sign of growth and helps drive our operations. But it's scattered in various places and we're forced to exclude much of it for security use cases, either because it's too costly to keep or simply because we can't due to architectural limitations. We're putting in controls and processes to maintain adherence to board level mandates around compliance and risk mitigation, but it's generating more noise and we're dealing with more alerts, not fewer. And we're continuing to invest in a defense in depth strategy, but that comes with process silos that are difficult to overcome as those silos are essentially speaking different languages. So despite all this, when it comes down to it, we still want what we've always wanted, shorter dwell times so we can prevent damage to critical business assets and avoid data loss, faster remediation of complex threats so we know we're mitigating risk as effectively as we can, an accelerated investigation response in terms of people needed to gather evidence and the time required to do so. Relentless pursuit of those outcomes has driven the evolution of Elastic Security. Our mission at Elastic Security is to protect the world's data and systems from attack. Elastic started its security efforts with SIM, since security analytics is largely, largely a search problem. Next, we joined forces with Endgame to combine SIM and endpoint security into a single application. With our 714 release in August of this year and the GA of Elastic Agent with Endpoint Security, we delivered on that promise, providing advanced threat prevention, detection, and response for all Elastic users. Elastic now, today, solves endpoint prevention, endpoint detection, and SIM and security analytics use cases in a single agent and a single unified platform, a solution categorized as Extended Detection and Response, XDR. Our vision now for Elastic Limitless XDR is to unify the core capabilities of SIM, security analytics, EDR, EPP, cloud workload protection, and cloud security posture management in a single user experience available starting via free and open distribution. Let me spend a minute here on the future. If we're going to protect endpoints, then we need to go where the endpoints are going and they're going to the cloud. Cloud workload protection is essentially runtime protection for cloud endpoints. Just as Elastic's EPP solution for client endpoints stops malware, ransomware, and other attacks directly on the host, CWPP focuses on stopping threats that target cloud workloads. 
To protect every endpoint, the natural evolution of VPP is to protect cloud native systems. Runtime protection, however, is not enough. As we've learned from attacks like SolarGate, getting visibility earlier in the attack lifecycle increases security efficacy. Cloud Security Posture Management, CSPM, helps to harden systems against attacks before the attack hits, i.e. before runtime protection. CSPM concentrates on security assessment and compliance monitoring for workloads in public cloud environments. The colloquial phrase, left of boom, is used to describe these features that can protect an asset before the attack. And we're evolving rapidly into providing this functionality for our users. You will hear shortly from Amit Kampfer and Jake King, the leaders respect, respectively of Build Security and CMD, two recent additions to the Elastic Security team. But first, I'm gonna pass the microphone now to Mike Nichols, our product lead for security. Mike? Thanks so much, Nate. I'm Mike Nichols, the product lead for Elastic Security. I wanna go a little more depth about what it is we're actually building and delivering to our users today. You heard Nate earlier talk about limitless XDR. This is really exciting for us because it allows us to encapsulate the power of all of our different capabilities into that single solution that we deliver to every user. Limitless XDR is founded in SIM. SIM is the backbone of what we're doing, that ability to collect all that new data that, that uh, Nate talked about earlier and analyze it fast enough to stop damage and loss in your organization. But SIM needs more. It can't just detect. SIM has to have a way to respond. Bringing in the, the native endpoint capabilities allows us to prevent and respond to threats directly from the Elastic Stack itself. So you can now actually prevent damage and loss from occurring inside your organization. And as Nate mentioned, endpoints are moving to the cloud rapidly. So cloud security for us is that additional layer of protection that brings us to every endpoint, not just your client Windows and Mac systems, but now also that cloud Linux environment as well. So you can prevent, detect, respond across the organization and across any type of data that might come into that security analytics and SIM layer. Now, XDR, you know, in security, we love to make up new acronyms, but really what XDR means is it is detection and response, no matter the data source. And, and honestly, that's what you care about most as a user, right? You don't care if it comes from endpoints or comes from network or a SaaS authentication system or your cloud infrastructure. You just care that you can find a threat that exists in that data. So that X or the extended data set is the ability for us to look into everything out there and detect and respond to threats that might exist. And when we talk about limitless, that's the unique uh, value proposition that Elastic brings to the table. It's the fact that we can provide unprecedented access and speed to your information. You know, one of the key problems that we face in security is, as Nate mentioned, the fact that we can't keep all the information we need. And attacks are constantly uh, showing us that that information over a long amount of time is necessary to have. Uh, Nate mentioned SolarGate earlier in the fact that we needed six months or more of information to have that assurance of, did this attack ever happen before? And unfortunately, most places are not able to maintain that due to economic or technical concerns. Well, in Elastic, we built a powerful new capability that allows you to search directly on inexpensive object stores, places like Amazon S3 or Google Snapshots, or even on-premise using things like MinIO. Uh, you'll see later on in the demonstration, us searching hundreds of terabytes of snapshotted data and providing the answer back to the analyst, did this ever happen instantly? So you can actually take remediation steps across the assurance of knowing it was there or not. And this is a little bit of a deeper picture than the previous one I showed of what's actually inside Elastic Security. What are we actually providing? You know, most people think about Elastic as the best place to, to keep and access your data. And, and that's always been the case and still is. We are the best place to action your information. But what Elastic Security brings to the table are two powerful new capabilities that previously weren't available within Elastic. The first is prevention stopping an attack before it even starts. And you know, the best way to reduce your mean time to remediate is to not have to remediate anything, right? So bring it down to zero with actual prevention. Elastic Security is offering preventative capabilities for every user for things like malware and ransomware. But not just prevention, we also now have a, a direct way to respond to threats. Elastic's always integrated into the ecosystem of all of our partners and, and offered an ability to uh, interact with those systems to do remediation and response actions. But now we also have a first party system that can do response directly on hosts with Elastic Agent. We could do things like on-demand data collection with OS query and even lock down a system and stop it from uh, communicating or possibly exfiltrating data out of your environment. 
These new capabilities are directly in Elastic Security and available to every user in that Limitless XDR technology. I mentioned that SIM is really the backbone of our Limitless XDR. The ability to do security analytics at scale on any data set is key to what makes Elastic Elastic. There's many other capabilities as well that we provide users, things like proactive hunting, uh, advanced threat detection above and beyond the sort of typical attacks now using things like MITRE's attack matrix as a core foundation for how we look for threats in the organization. Of course, monitoring and porting and what matters most in your, in your systems, building into your incident response and collaborating amongst your peers with a built-in case management system. And there's a huge vision and plan for SIM over time. Lots of new capabilities will continue to be added into these. Things like analyst insights, which gets me excited because this answers that core question of where do I start? Providing things like machine learning and automation to tell us this is the most important item in the environment, start here. And then say, you know what, you actually probably should do this next, actually guiding you through the recommendations of what to do next. I hope that you've uh, you've seen a, a kind of constant iteration of value release by release and what we're offering into that security analytics and SIM use case. And stay tuned because a lot more is going to come out over our coming releases. But as I mentioned, you know, new for us as well is now this endpoint security capability built directly into the Elastic Stack. And I want to invite onto the stage now Braden Preston, who is our director of product for endpoint security, because he's going to go a little bit deeper into this new capability that provides both prevention and response directly in the Elastic Stack now. Hey, thanks, Mike. My name is Braden Preston. I'm going to drill in specifically on the endpoint security capabilities here for the next few minutes or so. So no XDR solution is, is complete without the ability to prevent, detect, and then respond to those threats. And with the endpoint security integration, we deliver prevention, both pre-execution before the attack is able to get started when that file is dropped to disk or when that process tries to execute. We prevent post-execution as well through MITRE attack based behavior protections. So looking for those malicious techniques that attackers are doing, and we can stop that attack before they're able to progress, move laterally or steal credentials. And then finally, we have the ability to respond to those threats by isolating it from the network to ensure that lateral movement can take place. And then we've also instrumented OS query to put a search box on your endpoint to be able to then collect that deep and rich information that's, that's found on that host. And I'll walk through each one of these a little bit more detail now. So on the pre-execution side, we have machine learning models that prevent malware and ransomware. We also have behavioral-based ransomware prevention, and we have the ability to protect the master boot record, and we drop canary files on the system. So we have four ways to prevent ransomware. And we also have the ability to protect memory in the system, to stop an attacker from injecting code into an already running process or hollowing out that process, and then basically hiding in plain sight. It's a very advanced attack technique that we have the ability to prevent in a pre-execution fashion. On the post-execution side, I talked about those MITRE attack map behavioral-based protections. We have the ability to stop the progression of those attacks all the way from initial access through the impact category, which is presented by ransomware here with advanced ransomware prevention. And then once we identify that attack, we isolate that host, lock it down from the network and take full remediation action all within this limitless XDR solution. And just like with SIM, there's plenty more to come. We're gonna be providing extended endpoint visibility, not just desktops, laptops, and servers, but moving into common infrastructure and cloud workloads, containerized workloads and serverless workloads, and then extended prevention and detection, bringing in new forms of ways to prevent attacks from advanced memory attacks, new ransomware variants, credential stealing, and then providing these across all operating systems, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. And then finally, extending our response capabilities, building in capabilities like automated rollback, file operations, process operations, registry operations. All of these things are coming very soon. We're really looking forward to everybody trying out our endpoint security capabilities. And now I'm gonna hand it over to James Pateri, who's gonna put everything together in a really phenomenal demo of our extended detection and response capabilities. Thanks, Braden. Hi, everyone. My name is James, and I'm really excited to demo all the amazing features that we've been working really hard on. Uh, so let's just dive right in. So here, what you're seeing is the latest and greatest of Elastic Security as of today. Um, and we're going to go through a typical example of what uh, we can detect, what we've prevented, uh, what we would have prevented if some of those options were on, because we are going to look at the difference of uh, actually a ransomware variant that was set 
to have some of the options in detection only mode versus prevention. Coupled with that, we're going to be talking about a few other really cool features uh, within uh, Elastic Security. I am here within our alerts view. So as an analyst, this is typically where most people would start off their day. Let's go ahead and look at some of the alerts that we're facing with. Um, just a bit of background of this environment. Uh, I am running a cluster in uh, Elasticsearch service in Google Cloud. I'm actually running multiple clusters. There's three clusters running and we're going to be utilizing a feature called cross cluster search to search all those clusters within a singular view which is really handy, especially if you're living in multiple different cloud regions or even cloud providers, because it eliminates the need to transfer data across and you won't need to pay those extortionate uh, transfer costs between cloud providers. I'm going to start off first looking at some of the alerts we had triggered for a ransomware variant, which actually just resurfaced. So we're looking at Revel ransomware sample here. This is a real sample pulled off VirusTotal. We have a Windows agent and a few Linux agents as well, all running Elastic Agent with the endpoint security integration. Now, keeping in mind that Braden spoke about our several layers of detection and prevention. The first layer is our file-based malware detection and prevention. And as you're seeing here, that is the first thing that triggered. So as soon as this ransomware made it onto this host, uh, however that may be, whether that's a phishing attempt or some other method of delivery, uh, we picked it up straight away in detection mode. So if we ran this in our prevention mode for file-based malware and ransomware, it would have stopped there, but that would have made for a very boring demo. So we actually let it run up until our ransomware be behaviors kick in. But I just want to point out that even before the ransomware would have had time to do anything, we would have just killed it straight away. So killed, done, and then you can deal with it from there. And as an analyst, you have several ways of actually examining this event. So right now we're looking at it sort of like a traditional table style view. Uh, you can opt to switch to something we call our event rendered view as well, which is a really friendly way of looking at exactly what happened in like a story. So basically this is saying that, hey, listen, James Spiteri in this domain on this host was uh, detected creating a malicious file in this directory via this process, so on and so forth. So I already told you pretty much exactly what happened. There are other views though as well. So one thing we can do if you have the endpoint security integration enabled is we have the option to analyze this event in a more graphical way. So we can actually see the full process tree of what happened there. So we can see the initial binary, as it starts to run, we can see all the arguments, we can see files it created. So this bit of malware actually creates some other files, including some libraries as well. And then we can see how they spawn off of each other. So this is another view analysts have to determine what that uh, malware actually did. Let's look at some of the other alerts. Let's look at some of the other layers of detection and prevention that we had trigger here. So the next one in line, it's saying there was a potential DLL side loading uh, event. This is one of our detection rules running in this traditional SIM fashion. So data is being sent by the agents to Elastic and we're examining it that way. So our detection engine is constantly running, looking for these events. If we click on this, we can see exactly what the query was and what we're looking for. If as an analyst you want to see, hey, why was this detected? We can actually look at the query that was run here. And in actual fact, you can see this query is looking specifically for one of the process executables that was created by that malware. Uh, this was fairly recent. This is actually as a result of Revel. And you can see it's one of the reference URLs we provided. So that's the second layer of protection that you have. Let's look at another. Uh, actually, let's go back to alerts. So the next one on the list, we had another malware detection event because uh, the resulting library, we also picked that up as malicious as well. So you can actually see in this case, it was a library event. So we make that very clear as well. And we had another SIM detection here. So enable host network discovery. We saw NetSH being run. But then the next one on the list was memory threat detection. So now we're actually looking at a uh, shell code in memory. So we would have been able to prevent it at that layer as well. Again, we were in detection only mode here, but that is yet another layer of detection and prevention that we had. And there were multiple variants in here just because this did actually several things in memory. There's two more alerts, and this is probably one of the more interesting ones where we prevented something because in our policy, and I'll show you that in a second, we set it to prevent ransomware behaviors and ransomware activity. So Braden mentioned earlier that one of the ways we can detect ransomware is by uh, canary activity. And you can see that we highlight that this was picked up by our canary detections. Um, so we prevented that ransomware from actually going in and encrypting all these files. 
Uh, even though all the other steps were in detection, we still had one prevention available to us. But just to highlight that, uh, we could have just killed this immediately right here, which is highlighted in this next set of alerts on this other host. So this is an example uh, of malware being prevented directly on a host. This one had to, happened to be a Linux host as well, because now we do have malware detection and prevention on Linux. Um, this is also fairly recent as well, as in it recently resurfaced again, um, XMRig uh, mi minor activity. So this is an example of where we simply went ahead and prevented that from even running, because that's what we had set in our policy. So one of the things we could have done as an analyst to prevent any potential data exfiltration, because some of the, some of the detections we had were successful here, so this, this ransomware did something before we prevented it, why don't we go, as just as a precaution, isolate this host and take it off the network? So right within the alerts view, uh, I have uh, an option here to take uh, an action, and one of that, those actions is to isolate this host. So this will basically kill all network connectivity from that host, apart from the interaction back to Elastic Security. So we're gonna still be able to interact with this host as it's isolated. So we're gonna go ahead, isolate that host. Let's go ahead and leave a comment here as well. Potential malware infection, just write the comment there confirm, and then that will go ahead and take the host off the network. So really, really handy to have right where the analyst needs it. You don't have to switch menus. You don't have to go anywhere else. As you're investigating your alerts, it's right there. Now that we've taken action though, so something we should want, probably do is make the wider security team aware or potentially even the wider business. We can actually assign, I should say, open up a case and within that case, we're actually able to track the isolation events. We're able to add timelines and alerts. Uh, in the interest of time, I have one ready here for us today, uh, which is going through this pretty much exact case. Uh, and you can see here, uh, I've added some of the alerts that we had. Uh, and also, because we're in Elastic here and we're really good at analytics, I went ahead and included a chart within the case of some of the activity that happened around this ransomware event. You're also able to, as you can see here, when I was isolating that host earlier and releasing it, these are all tracked and it's also synchronized to Jira. So if your organization uses something like Jira or IBM Resilient or Swimlane, we have the ability to integrate there as well. So a really nice way of keeping track as you're going through an incident or some form of activity whilst you're investigating alerts. Heading back to the alerts page, a couple of more things I want to show you. So we have a few other alerts here, just to highlight some of the other detection and prevention mechanisms we had. So this is an example of a behavior rule. So one of the things Bradian mentioned is we're able to run some of these rules that are traditionally run on the SIM side and actually run them on the endpoint. Uh, in this case, we were looking at suspicious uh, Microsoft Office uh, child processes, you can see we have actually the corresponding sim rule here as well, so we were running both. And again, we could have just prevented this from running. So if we had prevention from the behavior rule side, this wouldn't have been able to run at all. We would have killed it on the endpoint and gotten the corresponding uh, alert. So it's very common within a security team to utilize uh, threat intelligence. This is going to aid your investigation and it's also going to allow you to spot known threats. We have a malware detection alert here on one of our Linux machines for this Mozi variant of ransomware. Uh, within Elastic Security, we do provide a threat intelligence module that you can use, and we also do investigation time enrichments. So you don't even have to run these proactively. We will actually do that enrichment for you as you're investigating this alert. As an example here, if we click on the View Details option, you can see that within our Threat Intelligence tab, we have two indicators that were matched. I'll just click on these in a sec, uh, just so you get more detail and a better view of them. And we can actually see this matched data that we're getting from abuse.ch, which is a very popular open repository for threat intelligence. But I'd also like to highlight that this threat intelligence lives in a remote cluster. Because we're using that cross-cluster search functionality, I can actually utilize it if it's sitting in another cluster, potentially in another part of the world. Two more things I'd like to show you as part of this demo today. So we're going to step out of alerts, and it's finally time to see searchable snapshots. Traditionally, uh, within Elastic, if you wanted to be able to search data, you'd have to have that data living on, uh, on disk on a node, whether that was fast um, solid state drives or spinning disks, it had to be present on a node to search it. With searchable snapshots, we actually now allow you to search an archive. So if you're archiving data for longer retention periods, you no longer have to bring that data on board and restore it back into your cluster to search it. We actually allow you to search it as it lives in the archive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go perform a search that's gonna use the searchable snapshot feature, and it's going to use it 
on a snapshot that is in a remote cluster. So we're going to combine cross-cluster search and searchable snapshots in one go. I'm going to look for a specific indicator here called cdnverify.net. This was actually an IOC used in a popular Maver campaign from the APT28 group. And what I've done here is I'm going to search for events which are happening today. And you can see today we had a few hits. But what if I had this a couple of years back? To be able to search that snapshot, all I need to do is change my time window. I'm configured here. My instance of Elastic Security is configured to use that snapshot in that remote cluster. So all I'm going to do is switch from the last 15 minutes or today, and we're going to go switch to two years. Let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to go after it, it searched any data that's living on nodes. It knows it's going to go and have to search that archive. And you can see very, very quickly, even though, again, this is a remote archive in a remote cluster, we still got 54,000 plus results back in a couple of seconds. And I'm just going to change the order of how we sort, just so you can see when the first indicator uh, was uh, within our data set. And I believe it goes back to some time, yeah, here we go, December 4, 2020. And this is packet data. This is a 300 terabyte archive of packet data. What I'll do just in case you have any doubts that this is actually a snapshot, I have here the remote cluster with the remote indices, and you can see this is in our frozen tier and it's data frozen. So it was fast because I previously ran it. So there are some elements that we cache, but even before that, it only takes a couple of minutes. So super powerful. The same workflow for an analyst. We didn't have to do anything other than changing the dropdown uh, within the time frame here, and we're still able to search it. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you today is the functionality of OS Query within the Elastic Stack. So OS Query, for those of you who don't know, is an extremely powerful open source tool developed by Facebook, which essentially turns your host into a queryable relational database. So we have the detection and prevention in place. That's great. But before we even get to that, shouldn't we be patching our systems? And this is something we can actually use OS Query to track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use OS Query to actually run a query on one of my endpoints here, and we'll do this live, to see if my host is actively being patched. And I'm going to pick my Windows host, and I have a saved search here, so you can actually save these searches. And you can see it's basically going to look at a table called patches with an OS query, and we're going to look for security updates. I'm going to run this, and hopefully within a couple of seconds, I should get results. The beauty of this is, remember, this host is still isolated. So if you're going through a situation where you're investigating alerts and you want to know, shouldn't this have been stopped by this patch? You can actually check if this patch was applied. And you can see here, all the way up to 4th September, we were still getting patches. So at least we know this host is actively being patched. And also, you can schedule these queries to run on a schedule. That's all the time we have for this demo today. I hope you enjoyed it. There's way more we can talk about, but right now I'm going to hand it back over to Mike. James, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. So we talked about, uh, you know, SIM endpoint security, and, uh, and I want to now spend a little bit of time on the cloud security piece. As Nate mentioned earlier, you know, we have this exponential increase of data as we are moving our workloads into the cloud. And uh, we want to protect our users and go where our users are and ensure we are offering that same powerful capabilities that Braden talked about earlier uh, on our endpoints into those cloud infrastructures as well. Uh, Nate mentioned a couple uh, key teams that we've joined forces with recently in build security and CMD. And I'm excited to talk about how each of those fits into this uh, vision and strategy we have for cloud security. So first, you know, when we think about cloud security, we think about sort of two major capabilities. And Nate touched on these earlier when he was speaking to problems like SolarGate being able to have visibility left of boom, as we say. So let me start first on that continuous cloud native security side. That's the layer that allows us to get introspection into things like the CI CD pipeline and, and, and these sort of the code processes as being developed all the way into the deployment of those systems. So as you spin up a, a new container, we're actually able to instrument and analyze the policies there to ensure that it meets the standards your organization is set. And on that side, uh, the expertise and team that has joined us from Build Security is going to provide a fantastic way for us to elevate our protections uh, on that piece. And on the right-hand side here, we have workload runtime security. And there, we're talking about that deep protection of the system itself as it's actually executing and doing the job you set it out to do. The under, you know, looking for things like kernel exploitations and adversaries trying to circumvent protections that might have been put in place. And here, 
the expertise and team that's joined us from CMD is providing a, a great leg up in our ability to add that layer of capabilities into our solution as well. You know, and the best way to talk about both of these is to actually introduce uh, two people from both of those companies to come and speak about the different areas. And actually, first, I'm going to introduce on the CMD side, Jake King. Jake is the co-founder and CEO of CMD, and he's going to come and show you a little bit of what CMD offers today and talk about the vision of how we're going to pull those capabilities directly into the Elastic Stack for all of our users tomorrow. Jake, please take it away. Hey folks, Jake King here from CMD, wanting to talk a little bit about workload runtime protection with CMD and Elastic. Wanted to start today's presentation off by explaining a little bit about what CMD does. And fundamentally, when we talk to our customers, securing your infrastructure from unauthorized use and threats has always been one of our primary goals. We wanted to take the market of runtime security connected with other disparate industries and really create a first class experience for operations teams, infosec engineers and compliance engineers who want to solve a problem around access control, limited guardrails and creating a better experience for their engineers overall from an observability and threat detection standpoint. We termed this uh, market segment infrastructure detection and response, providing real-time visibility, search and analytics, and preventative controls for your organization, and really providing these in a single agent SaaS portal solution that was able to be delivered easily and efficiently throughout your environment. We focused on three key areas with our product. Host access, providing, gain, providing and gaining visibility into those user sessions that are running in your production environments. User services and services running on your infrastructure. Those processes interacting with your file system, your servers and your, your system operations. And the assets within your environment. System host names, those environments and the kind of connective tissue that they have between one another. As well as file access and network connectivity metadata. CMD provided at our core logging analytics, act access management capabilities, observability and monitoring, and detection and response capabilities within our portal. And many of those customers that are using our platform integrated these data points into same solutions that are in our and customers' environments today, centralizing these logs to allow for XDR capabilities as they grew their businesses. CMD's vision as we move into the Elastic family is to continue to build with that seam and log analytics in mind, really providing leading class forensics, augmenting real-time visibility, protection, and some of those detailed investigation capabilities that we've had in product for many years, and combining our expertise together with the Elastic team to build a single runtime security application that will deliver those three verticals of product solution. Something to give you a bit of an idea of where CMD has come from over the last few years is using our existing product today. And I'm excited to give you a bit of a preview of some of the capabilities CMD customers have been taking advantage of over the last few years. Our portal is a simple web application that allows you to centralize a number of key components around your Linux infrastructure, being able to highlight users, policies that are firing within your environment, and preventative controls that have been instrumented in the system uh, end to end. Sessions are where we begin. Being able to observe any session within your infrastructure and environment, this specifically being human interaction sessions, provides you with an insight into your infrastructure that you've really never had before. We don't simply coalesce logs into a flat file. We group sessions, allowing you to identify the actions that an engineer may have taken within an infrastructure environment, targeting any binary, for further inter investigation, the abilities to see details around the session and instrumentation of what that user used, also, also even down into the server details and all of the information in between. With these views in mind, we wanted to create a first class experience for observing and demonstrating actions and the system output, capturing things such as TTY writes, the ability to look at ways that files were written or modified, and even being able to instrument and highlight sensitive actions within the environment. CMD provides and, and still provides for our customers many controls, templatized and, and aligned with existing policies within organizations today. These may be MITRE ATT&CK, they could be something as simple as GTFO bins, highlighting when a user may be trying to exfiltrate data or obfuscate for them, their actions from a security tool. Here's in one of our sessions an alert. We can see that this user has actioned an alert by running the chmod command with 0400 permissions on the temp secret file. We can see the description of the policy. It's a violation of our SOC 2 policy, and we can see exactly why this action was fired. 
We wanted to commoditize some of the complex ways that organizations and engineers were trying to observe threats within their environment and really coming at it from a more clear and concise way. This doesn't only start and end with policies that CMD and our team have crafted. CMD brings a multitude of really simple ways to build policies inside your environment that follow a simple if-else standard format. If a condition is run, an action can be followed up. These policies are entirely editable by our customer base and take advantage of our real-time agent push-pull mechanism to distribute those policies into the environment that you're looking to distribute to. We've, bought, we've worked for many years building a series of standardized policies that align with many industry standards, SOC 2, ISO, PCI, even some more aligned generic standards that allow our customers to map the controls that we've built today in amazing ways inside the platform. Centralizing inside the tool is the way that we observe and, and, monify, and monitor alerts. When an action is made, we have alert resolution and logic built into platform. And these are some of the capabilities that you'll see us starting to add to the Elastic team and the suite of tools as we start to integrate our platform more closely with the Elastic team. Case management and the ability to observe and identify alerts. Context monitoring for the ability to be able to dive into a session and immediately observe threats within that infrastructure, identifying exactly what the user may have done, all the while being able to centrally deploy and manage the solution from our SaaS portal. Wanted to give you a quick preview of CMD today. Hopefully it's been helpful to see uh, our controls in action and some of the things you can expect from our team. We're incredibly excited to bring some of these uh, controls, observability and advantages of our data model into the Elastic family. And we're immensely excited to hear feedback from the community uh, and understanding ways that we can better integrate these products into your daily workflows, bring some amazing visibility to your Linux fleets, containers, controls and runtime observability and providing an end-to-end -end solution for you to take a look at. I'm Jake King from CMD. Thank you so much for your time. Jake, thanks so much. And, and I hope all of you today can see the excitement we have of looking at that powerful capability that CMD offers and, and thinking about how that's going to be delivered directly in the Elastic Stack soon for all of our users. And let's go back to that continuous cloud native side. Uh, the next person I want to bring on stage here is Amit Kaunfer, who's going to talk about how the build security team is providing this amazing way to introspect and analyze the policy and protect your environment at that build time and deployment time. Uh, Amit was the CEO of build security and has now joined us into Elastic uh, inside of our Elastic security team. So Amit, please take it away. What I'm about to show you is our vision of how build security will integrate within the Elastic stack, starting from Kibana through the Elastic search and all the way down to the Elastic agent. Here in Tel Aviv, we have a small but mighty team of engineers working hard to help you get on top of your cloud security posture. This first dashboard that you see here, and again, this will change in the future, provides an overview of your cloud security posture, compliance findings, and where our focus needs to be. We know how complex managing compliance can be, so this dashboard is really the heart of it. The score that you see here on the upper left corner of the screen is generated using industry standard benchmarks, such as CIS, GDPR, PCI, and more. Now let's explore the policy rules that enable us to provide this information to the user. Our users will have the complete control over the benchmarks they use, how they use them, and when they want to use them. In a dry run mode, in an active enforcing mode using con admission controllers, our plan is to start with CIS, focusing on Kubernetes, but then take it from there to other clouds like AWS, GCP, and Azure, and other compliance benchmarks like GDPR, PCI, and more. Before I turn it back to you, Ash, I want to show you one more thing, a tiny glimpse into the power of the solution. On the single view of a rule, you'll be able to see all the information about it, the rationale behind it, and a way to remediate the findings of the rule. On the right-hand side of the, of the screen, you can see the regular code. And this is because we're using Open Policy Agent under the hood. Open Policy Agent is an extensible open source policy engine that recently graduated from CNCF. And here at Elastic, we are embracing OPA in keeping with our community-driven, open standard product development philosophy. There is a ton more to come, so stay tuned.
I mean, thank you so much. Uh, it was really great to hear all the different capabilities that the, the build team is providing and bringing in, uh, into our team here in Elastic. You know, you've heard from a lot of us today, and, and I hope you're getting excited. I hope you're seeing the power of what we offer here in the Limitless XDR that Elastic Security is delivering. Uh, from the foundational elements of the SIM and analytics technology to building that native endpoint to provide you with prevention and response capabilities directly in Elastic. And as you heard from both Build and CMD, the future plans for us as we expand our cloud security capabilities to protect you where your, your users and where your systems are going. I want to go back a layer and actually show all the capabilities here being delivered inside of that single limitless XDR solution, because you know this is the part that I get really proud of. The fact that the way that we have chosen to deliver this, to provide this power and access to all of our users, to have that open ability to say, look, if you need a SIM, if you need input security, if you need cloud security, uh, you come to Elastic today, you can start for free on the cloud, you can download yourself right now and get access to all these unique and powerful capabilities right away. You know, that's something that I think we, we, uh, we really appreciate here, that it's the ability of unifying these different use cases, unifying these technologies into one core solution to solve the problems that exist for you in your environment. But it's not just what we can deliver. It's not just what we can develop. We also bring to bear with us a massive community of both partners and users that are always helping to accelerate and elevate what we have today. Uh, no matter whether it's inbound data, enriching information, connecting outbound to things like response platforms, or even consulting and education, there is a massive amount of people there that are ready to help, both from the user perspective and from the partner perspective. And you know, the combination of that team plus ourselves actually becomes greater than the sum of those two parts. It, it's pretty amazing to, to just react and interact with the community and see how many people are willing to help or how many people are, have already developed things like connectors you might want or you know, uh, connectivity into systems you might already have in your organization. And so when you, when you choose to work with somebody like Elastic and partner with us, we bring with us this massive community as well, which I just think is an amazing differentiation that Elastic brings to bear. So hopefully, you know, talking with all the different people that were here today on stage, talking about where we're going in security from the SIM side to the endpoint security side to the evolution of cloud, and talking about sort of why we are here in the first place and the problems we're trying to solve. I hope you get as excited as I am. I'm really passionate about the ability to bring this, to bring a solution to these problems to everyone in the world, to every user through Elastic. Uh, and if you want to learn more, there's these deeper talks that we have throughout the rest of our Elasticon events. Uh, you can do things like learn more about OS query or learn more about what we mean when we talk about democratizing security. So take a look at these different uh, talks here that we think are really, really great ones to catch. Check out your schedule. There's all different events throughout the, the different solutions in the observability and enterprise search and the stack and the cloud. And uh, I hope you make some more time to just learn more about what we have to offer. And you know, if you don't want to go to talks or maybe in addition to the talks, you can also check these links out. Things like uh, trying ourselves out for free today in the cloud. Just click a button and get started immediately. Or just learning more about our additional upcoming Elasticon events. So hopefully, uh, again, I, I really want to thank you for your time. I hope you appreciate you, you appreciate uh, the work we're putting into solving these challenges for you and that you uh, go check out some more talks. Go try, try us out today in the cloud. And on behalf of myself, everyone that presented in the entire Elastic Security team. I just wanna say thank you. And uh, we're here for you, we're here to protect you and uh, we'll talk to you more soon. Thanks.